Hi, welcome back, and we've got a head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head today. Um, so we're looking at the Toyota GT86 at Brands Hatch in Assetto Corsa, Gran Turismo Sport, and Project Cars 2. So you've got a full lap here uh, with the audio switching between them. Um, I've also included a no commentary version of the full lap um, with all of them at the end of this, so you can hear the audio switch properly without uh, listening to me waffle on. Um, so took them all for a drive. The interesting thing here is the lap time was difference was less than a second between all of them. Uh, GTS was the quickest, then Assetto Corsa, then Project Cars, but I say it's within a margin of error certainly for all of them. Um, so a little bit of time correction done here. I've corrected it to Assetto Corsa, which was the middle one, uh, as I say. Uh, in terms of driving them. Um, even pushing the cars through some of the corners, Gran Turismo Sport was the most forgiving by quite a long way. Um, you got very little feeling through the force feedback of the car moving around underneath you, uh, which you definitely got in Project Cars 2 and to a, the best degree in Assetto Corsa. Um, also the force feedback, one of the reasons why I like using Brands Hatch as a test track, and I'm glad it's in all three titles, is there's a lot of rising crests and undulations and compressions where the steering isn't straight, and you should feel that. Not enough to throw you off track, but you should feel that enough to have to apply a slight tension to your wrists to resist it and you do feel that quite clearly in uh, both Assetto Corsa and Project Cars 2 particularly at the bottom of compressions like um, the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend um, and it's unfortunately it's not there yet in Gran, Gran Turismo Sport uh, it'd be nice to see it come in the future so there we go there's the head-to-head -head. hope you like it thanks very much for your time bye